We pray together. Dear Father, I ask you to give me strength to live this day as you would have me live it. Guide me in shining with the light of Jesus Christ in my words and actions. Fill me with your spirit so that I may be for others an instrument of hope, peace, and love. Use me to bring joy to others so that they may understand the life you desire for all your children. Amen. Please stand. Rejoice.
time for the singing angels to come on up with Miss Kylie. This little light means the Trinity, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Okay, uh, let's see. We've got to get the stickers down the aisle so you guys can grab stickers when you head off to Sunday school. In, in the Bible, we're reading from Psalm chapter 22. And in there it says, 
uh, those who seek the Lord give praise. How do we give praise? Okay, everyone's going to do it with me. Ready? Glory to God in the highest. Okay, let's all do that. Ready? Glory to God in the highest. Okay, that's one of the ways we give praise. So every time you come to church and we start singing like that, we're giving God praise. And the reason we give God praise is because God does so much for us all the time. God loves us all the time, no matter who we are, no matter what we do, God always loves us. Jesus lives with us, and the Spirit fills us, and so we give God praise. That's what we do. Singing angels, we're giving God praise, singing this little light of mine. And we're going to give God praise for those who are being welcomed to Holy Communion today. And that's something we always do together. We're going to move along now, so let's put our hands together, let's pray. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for singing, Thank you for singing. Words, of words of praise to you. Help us lift our voices every time we come here. We pray through Jesus, our friend, our Lord, and our Savior. Amen. Okay, boys, go down the aisle, stickers down the aisle, Sunday school. We'll see you next time. Okay, we have a, a lot of things coming up very quickly because uh, with the school district having changed the schedule, um, we've had to change our summer schedule. We used to do all of our Camp Hope day, kid for, day camp for kids during the month of July. Now we have moved it to the month of June. So the first week of June we have Vacation Bible School, then right after that we have three weeks of Camp Hope. Uh, we need you to bring like water bottles because we have a lot of kids. We don't want them to get dehydrated during the hot days of June. Uh, we will have a, a, a poster with all sorts of items that we need uh, for you to bring to help us out with those ministries. So please take a look at all of those printed announcements there. Uh, in, in answer to all your questions, Pastor Diane is here and she's doing well after her surgery. She's feeling good and uh, oh, she has something to, to say. Well, first of all, I do. I want to thank everyone for all the prayers. I it's made a world of difference and also I, I'm noticing what a difference a week makes because if I tried to be here one week ago I would I would be in sad shape really sad shape so it's, it's great to know how God works in our bodies and definitely does bring that healing about but I did want to mention because it is a very busy day that we do have a family who is having a, a memorial service though uh, for their father their husband Kevin Elliott, who passed away recently, but he had lived out of town, but other family was here. So they've come here to have the service this Friday, 2 o'clock. So just please keep the Elliott family in your prayers. Okay, thank you, Pastor Diane. And I, I got to tell you, the last uh, eight or nine or ten days since her surgery has just been great fun for me because I've been able to tell her what to do and what not to do, and she actually listened to me. But that time is over, I guess, isn't it? So, okay. Uh, and in answer to the other question, yeah, I did something. And that's the problem with being a pastor. Being in front, you see everything and, and know everything about me. And I hurt myself, but you should see the other guy. No, no, that's not. <laughs> that's what someone said to me last night as I came into worship. Um, yeah, tendonitis, and I got it. Don't laugh too loud. I got it from playing guitar. That is actually how I injured myself. Last weekend, we had so much extra um, music for the women's event, rehearsals, things like that, and the band wanted me to play the hardest song I've ever written, and, and I hurt myself, and it's gonna take a while for it to recover. Does it hurt when I play guitar? Yes, a lot, but I do it for you. So. <laughs> Ow. Okay, so uh, what we would like to share right now is uh, we're involved in so many ministries and one of them uh, we kind of forget about because it's always out there in the lobby and it kind of becomes invisible. So I'm going to ask uh, a young man who has completed an Eagle project quite some time ago and right now we have four 
eagle projects in process here at Christ the Servant on our property. So let's hear now from uh, Mr. Sean Mossang. Come on up here and tell us about Scope for Hope. Hello, everyone. Um, <laughs> every day, we begin, our day, we begin our day the same way. We wake up, we get dressed, we brush our teeth, and we do this without a thought in our head. And in doing so, we become extremely complacent what we have access to and what we use every day. What if one day you woke up and you didn't have the resources or the means to wash your hair or wash your hands? Now this is what uh, Soap for Hope is all about. Soap for Hope is a nonprofit organization whose goal can be broken up into three parts. First of all, we want to increase hygiene. Secondly, we want to promote mental health. And thirdly, we want to, uh, we want to restore dignity back to others. And all this can be done through community involvement. About two years ago, I was finishing up my Eagle Scout project um, in Boy Scouts. And I got my idea for my Eagle Scout project from my dad's work. He's a United Airlines pilot. Whenever he would come home from his trip, he'd always bring home these small uh, hotel toiletries. And I would, uh, we used to take these and donate them back here at Christ's Tournament for their baby basketball program. And so I thought, well, what if for my Eagle Scout project, I took the same toiletries and I made them into hygiene kits? And so that's what we started doing. And we'd take these hygiene kits and we'd give them to LSSN. LSSN, or Lutheran Social Services, would give them to their clientele. And their clientele are people in the Las Vegas Valley who have little to no income. People who couldn't afford these hygiene items. And so that's what gave birth to the organization known as Soap for Hope. And we first began doing some drives at uh, my middle school uh, about two years ago. And in, within two weeks, we raised over 600 pounds of soap from this one middle school. Now, keep in mind that each one of these kits that we make, um, actually, I have one right here. Uh, each one of these kits that we make are about 0.8 pounds. And just from that one drive, that probably, I believe that led close to about 800 kits being made for LSSN. And the picture of the car up there, that's my mom's car two years ago. It took three trips to go from my middle school to our house to bring everything home. It was so much that I couldn't fit in the car till the third trip. <laughs> um, but another big help to this organization has been you guys here at Christ the Servant. You guys have been able to give us a consist on a consistent basis soaps and different toiletries to donate and uh, to make kits out of uh, to Lutheran Social Services. Um, we've been doing this here now for two years. We have this book out, out, out in the lobby where you guys like completely overfilled on some occasions, which is amazing because we are able to make these on a consistent basis for the LSSN food pantry. <laughs> uh, for the food pantry at LSSN, which is really great because it's really important for them to get these items. Because not only do they supply their clientele with food and other items, but the one thing that they can't get them is hygiene items. So all their hygiene items have to be donated. And Soap for Hope has been actually supplying LSSN with all their hygiene items for the last two years. So, thank you. And none of that could have been possible without you guys. Because it's with your help that we've been able to make these kits. If you want to learn more, please visit our website. It's soapforhope.info. You can learn all about it. These are the kits that we make. And it wouldn't have been possible without you guys. Because now with these kits, we can give everybody a shampoo, a conditioner, a body wash, some dental items, and lotion. And none of this would have been possible with the help, without the help of you guys here at Christ's Servant. So thank you so much for all your continuous help. Thank you. So we had the, uh, the, the women's gathering, the regional women's gathering last weekend, put together a, a bunch of packets from the, the soap items that you collected. How many packets were uh, made? 
We made last weekend 525 items for the social services. Okay. In about 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> well, we had 80 people also yeah. who were putting it together, so that, that kind of helped. You saw a bunch of those pictures up there were, uh, were their home. Uh, a lot of that's happening. And so uh, this is what we like, is taking it out of your kitchen and bringing it to places like Christ the Servant, Women's Gatherings, other organizations, and having them put together far more than you can do in your kitchen uh, in, in a couple minutes' time. So uh, that's the idea, is to make this a ministry that goes out far and wide from all of this. So remember, this is out in the lobby all the time that you can fill up, go home, and in your bathroom drawers, guess what you have? A whole lot of these things. Now, does it have to be hotel soap? It doesn't have to be hotel soap. We just like travel size. Because if you saw on the screen, and actually right here, these bags aren't very big. So they're big enough to hold like a toothbrush and some other items. But it's, we, like, it's kind of hard to put full size items in there because they either don't fit or they take up a lot of room. So we prefer like smaller items. Okay. And these also go to people who may be living in a shelter or living on the street. And they don't have a lot of room also to, to store bigger items like that. So this is a wonderful solution to that. Do you have any questions for Sean? This is your opportunity. Way in the back. What do you need the most? You know, <laughs> it's kind of hard to tell. Um, we recently did a drive at Coronado, and we got a lot of shampoos and conditioners. Um, so probably the most that we need right now are probably like lotions and body wash. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? So the next time you go to the dentist and they give you that little goodie bag and it has the little tiny toothpaste and it has the toothbrush that you're never going to use because you have your other kinds of toothbrush, it goes right in here. Right out by the name tag table is where this is. Thank you very much, Sean, for the ministry that you have created. <laughs> So last weekend we did have that uh, women's gathering. Uh, Phil, can you turn off the lights? We're going to see uh, for the next two minutes uh, what was going on here at Christ the Servant in our women's regional gathering. So uh, we were uh, also featuring uh, a lot of our ministries that help other people be able to help others. Uh, that included uh, the Soap for Hope, as well as our Baby Baskinets and Lutheran Social Services, and our Liberian Orphanage Ministry. And in the month of May, in the middle of May, we're going to give an update of all of the work that we've been able to do in Liberia for all of these orphans. And it's, and it's really, really good news. It's going to be exciting. 
Uh, so you want to be here for worship, and all of these things that we ever show in here always go up onto our YouTube channel, so you can check that out. We'll continue now with our scripture reading. Led by the Spirit, Philip encounters an Ethiopian official who is returning to his African home after having been to Jerusalem to worship. Philip uses their encounter to proclaim the gospel to him. Upon coming to faith in Jesus, the Ethiopian is baptized by Philip. Acts 8, 26-40 Then an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up and go towards the south of the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home. Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go over to his chariot and join him. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, do you understand what you are reading? He replied, how can I unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this, like a sheep he was led to the slaughter and like a lamb silent before its shearer. So it does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, about whom, may I ask you, does the prophet say this? About himself or about someone else? Then Philip began to speak, and starting with the scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they come up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more, and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Azotus, and as he was passing through the region, he proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. Our next reading is responsive. It's Psalm 22, 25 through 31. From you comes my praise in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the sight of those who fear the Lord. May your hearts live forever. Dominion belongs to the Lord who rules over the nations. Their descendants shall serve the Lord, and they shall proclaim to generations to come. We love God and others because God first loved us. We cannot say we love God whom we have not seen while hating fellow Christians whom we see regularly. Love towards God is to be matched by love towards others because the essence of God is love. Our second reading is 1 John 4, 7 through 21. Beloved, let us love one another because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed amongst us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. And this is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. 
No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us, because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent his Son as the Savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and they abide in God. So we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have the boldness on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For love has to do with punishment. Whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God, and hate their brothers or sisters are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from him is this. Those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. Please stand. of John the 15th chapter. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. So did you get a sense of um, repetition as you heard all the scriptures being read this morning? It seems like it was it's saying the same thing over and over, and, and we think, come on, just Twitter it, you know, because we're trying to figure out how to say everything we need to say in just a, a short phrase. You, you pick up, your, your phone dings at you, and you pick it up, and it's a text message. What do you expect to see? between one word or emo emoji to maybe two lines, that's all. What happens if you pick it up and you see a text and it's nothing but words? What do you think? I know what you think. You think no matter who sent it, you're thinking, what is wrong with you? Just say it what you mean. And here in these scriptures, said over and over in so many ways, and, and I know as, as Stephen's reading it, he's thinking, wait a minute, didn't I just read that line? Because it's being said in another way. Now remember, in the Greek language that this part of the Bible was written in, there's no punctuation. In ancient Greek, there's no periods, no commas, no quotation marks, no semicolons, nothing to let you know when one sentence ends and another begins, or where to pause, or where even to take a breath. And you get all of that from the meaning of the words, and you put it all together. So when you look at those scriptures printed in your bulletin, you see this big block of words, take out all the punctuation. 
So it's how complex this is. And it's done this way because we need to explore deeper and further. We need to be reminded of things about Scripture and about God's love for us. Well, the story from Acts, the first one that was read this morning, is about Philip. And an angel comes to Philip and says, get up and go. That's it. An angel comes, no introduction, no explanation, just get up and go. Now, if, if Philip were a traditional church in the 21st century, the, what would the response be? It would be something along the lines of, well, let me form a study group about this, and we'll, we'll learn about it, get all the information we can, and then we'll make a recommendation to the board, and the board will form a committee, and they'll do some exploration, and, and, and then start getting some bids, and, and you know, two years later, they might vote on something. Get up and go. Well, in this scripture, what does it say Philip did? He got up and went. Simple as that. Now, can you do that? Can you respond quickly when, when you hear of a need, when you see a need? Okay, my challenge to you is every one of you, when Sean was talking, is thinking, I've got so many of those things that are just cluttering up my drawers. Challenge is, go home and empty out those drawers. Put it in the bag, bring it back here. Otherwise, every time you go into your bathroom, you're going to feel guilty. Good. Sometimes that's a good motivator. Get up and go, so he got up and went. How does that work for our church? We're involved in so many great ministries, and one way it worked several years ago was I received a phone call from an angel, and the angel said, get up and sign a contract for free solar panels by a state-run grant. So what did I do? I got up and I got that contract and I signed it, and then I called the church council and said, I signed a contract. We better have a meeting, because I knew exactly what it was. The person who told me was involved in it and knew all about it, knew that if we didn't get up and go, it would be gone, and we would not receive it. So I got on the phone, and I called. I became the angel, and I called some other pastors, and I said, get up and go and get these free solar panels for your church. Three of them did. Two of them did. Two of them did. The rest of them said, we're going to form a study group. And it was gone. The opportunity was gone. Sometimes we do need to just get up and go. But we also need to be able to listen to the voice of God tell us what to get up and go for. And we try to share that with you so often. Here are the things that you are making happen. How many times did Sean say, you are doing this? We're going to have to keep count during the next service. How many times do you say that? For our Liberian Church ministry, it is your ministry. Lutheran Social Services, it is your ministry. All of the things that we are carrying, our summer ministries are your doing. We are getting up and going. One of the other things we are to do is we are to raise young people among us. And we're going to help them get up and go and be a part of this ministry and share and make us stronger. And that's what we're celebrating today. We are welcoming young people to the sacrament of Holy Communion. And remember, young people, when you come up for communion, when you walk up, do this, right? You put your hands out. You haven't been doing that yet because you've been walking up usually like this, and we give you a blessing. So if you walk up to us and you don't have your hands out, you know what we're going to do? We're going to, yeah, that's right. We're going to put our hand on your head and bless you because we may not remember who's who. <laughs> I have that trouble. So put your hand out because that's also saying, I am expecting to receive from the Lord. We are all to do that, to receive from the Lord. Everybody, put your hands out. We are all expecting to receive from God because God promises to do that. This time we will share in our 
Welcome to communion for the children and their families who have been part of the past few weeks. We might just push it right, just push this right back. I know, that's why I'm like, push it, push it. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to really be good. Don't lift the heavy things. Don't, 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 don't do anything that will hurt. So today we celebrate with, with these youth and their families, those who are coming to receive Holy Communion for the first time, and they've been sharing in their classes for the past few weeks. As I say their name, the child's name, I would invite you to come and start standing on this side, facing the altar where we have communion, and your family will stand behind you. So Layla Brisbane, come over here. And Kate Bristol, come right here. Brooklyn DeVito, right here. And your family can stand behind you. Brooklyn, right here, great. Yeah, and put your family right behind you. And then um, Chloe, Ganan, Ganyan. Then we have Raylene Hendren. So Chloe, then Raylene. Then Ella and Emma Hugh will be next. And next to Ella and Emma will be Alexander. Where's Alexander? Oh, there you are, Alexander McCool. Then we have James Panariso and Tara Siders. James and then Tara, scooch in there, all right, and Zach Tolls, where'd Zach go? He's coming, oh, they were getting him, all right, he'll be here shortly, okay. And we have two others. And there are two others, but because of uh, family members that were, weren't able to be here yet, they are waiting till September, so there were two more children who also participated. Yeah. So, I know Zach will be here real soon. We'll, we'll, uh, dear friend in Christ, your welcome to communion marks an exciting step in your life of faith. Christ's presence, strength, and forgiveness are already yours in baptism. Sharing in the bread and wine will help make Jesus real to you in a special way. We are proud of you, and we celebrate with you as you reach this important stepping stone in your life of faith. Listen now to the words of St. Paul in the Bible, advice for living together as Christ's family, and this comes from the book of Colossians, chapter 3. And he writes, Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other, just as the Lord has forgiven you, you also must forgive. Above all, Clothe yourselves with love, which binds everyone together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in the one body, and be thankful. So as a part of the classes that we had for the past few weeks, we also had an art project. And so over here, we have each, each child created their own tile that represents about God's love and what God gives to us in Holy Communion about the forgiveness and love that is through Jesus Christ who gave his own life for us and also now comes to us in the bread and the wine, the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Children of God, you have learned about the gift of Holy Communion. You know that Jesus gave his own body and blood for you for the forgiveness of sins. You know that we live a forgiven and forgiving life in Jesus' name. I ask you therefore, are you prepared to receive our Lord Jesus Christ as he comes to you now in this Holy Communion? If so, answer, Yes, with the help of God. Yes, with the help of God. Now, parents, I will ask you to give your child a blessing, so if you could place your hand on their head, and the family members, everyone who's with you, and then repeat after me. May, be, may this be the first day 
of new life in our family. May this gift bring forgiveness to our hearts and to our home. And may the forgiving presence of Jesus be a gift of healing and hope to you from this day on and forevermore. In Christ's name, amen. Now we need to have... We're going to need to get all the photographers to go over there now because yeah. we're going to have them yeah. turn around. Now the children so need everybody everybody to turn around towards, and children come, come up. Everybody come up this way. And now you come in front of your parents. Parents, come towards me. Kids, we want you out front so everybody gets to see you. Let's squeeze in this way so everybody's on the video, too. Everybody squeeze together, closer to the middle, closer to the middle. Come this way, toward the middle. Come this way, come this way. And we would like to welcome all of these children to receive the Sacrament of Holy Communion. I expect Instagram and Twitter and everything to be exploding right now as you upload all of these things, Facebook and all that stuff. Please do that. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please stand up quickly, walk around and greet each other with that peace of Christ. We will continue now with our offering. night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took the bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We pray together our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I invite our communion ministers, would ask that we would have five communion ministers to assist today. And everyone is invited and welcome to share in this gift of God's grace. We invite and welcome everyone who believes in Christ's presence to share in Holy Spirit. Here at your feet. 
save me from myself and calm the raging sea. You will be my ark that flows me up above the storm. Just say, just say the word, just say the word, I'll be able. Just say, just say the word, just say the word. Hear my humble prayer, help my unbelief, speak to me your hope, Jesus carry me, you will be my heart that flows.
please stand. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. for every kid who just received their communion today or our Eagle Scout Sean Mossang. Do that now. 